This is geometry section 3.2 notes. We're looking at properties of parallel lines. Corresponding angles postulate. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, and I don't know if I've told you this at this point, so in case I haven't, to show that two lines are parallel, you put the same number of arrows or little triangles on the lines but not on the ends. So this has got two and this has got two, it means those are parallel lines. So if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, so we got parallel lines, this is our transversal, then corresponding angles are congruent. So if you have a picture like this, then we know for sure that angle one is congruent to angle five, Angle 2 is congruent to angle 6. Angle 3 is congruent to angle 7. And angle 4 is congruent to angle 8. Let me highlight congruent angles for your viewing pleasure. Please note, this postulate only applies when you have two parallel lines. Can't just be any any two lines, they have to be parallel. That is the corresponding angles postulate. It's extremely important. You're going to use that postulate by name. Alternate interior angles theorem. This is a theorem because we can prove it using the corresponding angles postulate and other things. Postulate is assumed to be true, and I think that we can assume this to be true because if I were to take and take this parallel line and slide it down, the angles that we had formed would be identical. That's not a proof, by the way. That's just an explanation. Alternate interior angles theorem. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, now this picture shows the parallel lines because they have the same number of arrows on the inside of the each line, then alternate interior angles are congruent. So if we have a picture like this, we can conclude every time that angle three is congruent to angle six and angle four is congruent to angle five. Same color means they're congruent. Maybe you're colorblind. Let's make those a little different colors. There we go. Alternate exterior angle theorem. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, you know what, let me emphasize parallel. That's the part students end up forgetting about, and they just think any two lines in a transversal. They have to be parallel. Then alternate exterior angles are congruent. So if you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, then angle one is congruent to angle eight, angle two is congruent to angle seven. 1 and 8 are alternate exterior angles. 2 and 7 are alternate exterior angles. Consecutive interior angle theorem. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then consecutive interior angles are supplementary. It's different than the previous ones, which were congruent. So if you have a picture like this, we can conclude that angle 3 and angle five are supplementary. Likewise, angle four and angle six are supplementary. What does it mean to be supplementary? It means when you add their measures, you get 180. Lastly, we have the consecutive exterior angles theorem. If you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, then each pair of exterior angles, uh, consecutive exterior angles, like angles one and seven, they are supplementary. Angles two and eight are supplementary. Let's try to sum this up. 
Fill in the chart with the angle relationships that we have just learned. Which types of angles are congruent? Alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, and corresponding angles. Which type are supplementary? Consecutive interior angles, and consecutive exterior angles. Now, the above chart, meaning this right here, is only true if the transversal cuts two parallel lines. Let me try to sum this whole thing up with a picture, because even though we tried to sum it up with words just now, uh, for most of us, pictures are actually better than words. Some say that a picture is worth 987 words. Really no way of knowing if that's true. Are these lines currently parallel? We don't know. Are these lines currently parallel now? They sure are, because you got one of those arrows on each of them. So according to the theorems we just learned, this angle and this angle have to be congruent because they're corresponding angles. These angles have to be congruent. This is old stuff because they're vertical angles. Vertical angles are congruent. These angles are congruent because they're vertical angles. Now this angle here and this angle here have to be the same because they're vertical angles. This angle and this angle have to be the same because they're alternate interior angles. These are vertical angles. Here's the point of what I just did. If you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, you end up with two different measurements for angles, only two different measurements. If it's the, if it's the same number of arcs, it's the same measurement. If it's a different number of arcs, they're supplementary. It's a linear pair, supplement theorem. Linear pair, supplement theorem. Corresponding, I'm sorry, alternate, no. Consecutive exterior angles, supplementary. Consecutive exterior angles, supplementary. Consecutive interior angles, supplementary. All right, let's see if we can apply this. Find the measure of each angle and give a reason for knowing it. Well, first of all, do we have parallel lines? We do. One arrow, one arrow, two arrows, two arrows. So let's see if we can find the measure of each angle. And you can do this in any order. We're supposed to give reasons. So what about um, angle one? Any idea what angle one is? Angle one, it's measure. Angle one and 115, those have to be supplementary because they're a linear pair and the supplement theorem says that. So 115 plus what is 180? Well, that's 65. What's the reason? Supplement theorem. Once we know that, let's put it into the picture. Now we could say, well, angle one and angle six have to be the same. So the measure of angle six is 65 degrees. That's the corresponding angles postulate. If you were to accidentally call that the corresponding angles theorem, I would not crucify you for that. I wouldn't count it wrong on a test, but I would kindly remind you in person that that's incorrect. Now we could say, hey, angle six and angle four are the same, corresponding angles postulate. So the measure of angle four is also 65 degrees, same reason. We could say, that angle 115 degrees and angle two are the same, corresponding angles. So the measure of angle six is 115 degrees. 
It's the corresponding angles postulate yet again. And we could say that angles 2 and 3 are the same because of the alternate interior angle theorem, which means that the measure of angle 3 is 115 degrees. That's the alternate interior angles theorem. And then finally, we could say angle 4 and 5 are the same because they're alternate interior angles as well. Measure of angle 4 was 65, therefore the measure of angle 5 is also 65. Alternate interior angles theorem. All right, let's check out this. We're supposed to find the value of x, and this is not written extremely well. This is x down here. Do we have parallel lines? You betcha. We have a transversal. You know it. What type of angles are these? Those are consecutive interior angles. Consecutive interior angles are supplementary. What is the definition of supplementary? When you add the measures, you get 180. Therefore, x is going to be 66 degrees. Number three, do we have parallel lines? Yep, do we have a transversal? You know it. What type of special angles are these? These are alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles are congruent. So we could say 8x plus 14 equals 102. Subtract 14 from both sides. Divide by 8, and you get x is 11. Got two more. Do we have parallel lines? Sure. Do we have a transversal? You know it. What type of special angles are these? These are alternate exterior angles. The alternate exterior angle theorem says that these alternate exterior angles have to be congruent. Definition of congruent is that their measures are the same. They're equal. Now, we haven't done a problem like this, I won't believe, all year. We have a term that is squared, a variable, and a variable that's not squared. How do we solve such things? We're going to have to use the F word here. It is the worst F word that a mathematician can utter. We have to factor. To factor, we're going to get all the terms on the same side of the equation so that it's equal to zero. Now, it's likely that you're terrible at factoring because most human beings are. And the only way to get better at it is to try to internalize the rules and try to practice. This is a trinomial. There are three terms. We are lucky because the lead coefficient is 1. If the lead coefficient is 1, we can go directly from this being a trinomial to us multiplying two binomials. We take the x squared and we break it apart evenly and put that as the first term in each of our parentheses. Then we try to think of two numbers that multiply to get negative 54 and add to get negative 3. I'm going to write that down. We need to multiply to get negative 54. We need to add to get negative 3. What are those numbers? I believe those numbers would be negative 9 and positive 6. So in one of these, we have x minus 9. The other one, we have x plus 6. Let's just make sure that's right. x times x is x squared. Negative 9 times 6, negative 54. Negative 9 times x is negative 9x. 6 times x is plus 6x. If you add negative 9x and 6x, you get the middle term. We have factored it correctly. Once you've factored it, you set each factor equal to 0, and you solve it. We're going to get x equals 9 and x equals negative 6. Now you have to be careful. We will likely have context when we find these answers in geometry. So we have to see, does each of these answers make sense in the context of this picture? Now I can plug this 9 into either one of these because they're supposed to be equal. A 9 squared is 81. Could this angle be 81? Yes. Does it appear to be obtuse? No, but pictures are not drawn to scale. So 9 is a possible answer. Could negative 6 be an answer? Let's say negative 6 squared. 
That's a negative 6 times negative 6, which is a positive 36. Is that possible? It sure is. So our answer could be 9 or negative 6. If one of those answers gave you an unreasonable answer, such as an angle that's bigger than 180, can't be right because there are two angles here that add up to be 180. Could the angle end up being negative? Not, it couldn't make any sense if it ended up negative. So if the angle ends up negative, you can disregard the answer. Find the value of x and y. Now this picture is complicated because it looks nothing like the pictures we've seen in the past. So how can we make it look like the pictures we've used today? Well, for one, let's extend our parallel lines. Parallel lines are in pink. We know those are parallel because they have these little arrows on them. Now this has two transversals. Let's just look at one transversal at a time. The blue transversal, these are consecutive interior angles. So according to the consecutive interior angle theorem, if I add their measures, I should get 180. I got 64 for x. If I take this other transversal, what kind of angles are those? These are also consecutive interior angles, so they are supplementary. Definition of supplementary, you add their measures and you get 180. Alrighty, that concludes the notes. Please do the assignment and uh, have a wonderful day.